Is there something magical in the water of Muscle Shoals, Alabama? On the border of Alabama, the Tennessee River, also known as the Sinning River, surrounds Muscle Shoals. This well-crafted documentary gives us insight into what really happened behind the scenes in Muscle Shoals. Rick Hall is the man responsible for finding the Muscle Shoals sound. Des despite the extreme racism in Alabama during the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Hall was able to unite black and white artists to create chart-topping records. Hall's story is one of adversity and hard work. I had low expectations for this documentary, and I was pleasantly surprised by the stories shared by Rick Hall and, and his studio rhythm section, The Swampers. The documentary also features reflections on the Muscle Shoals' unique southern sound from legendary artists Clarence Carter, Etta James, Bono, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, and Aretha Franklin. I was surprised how many great records came out of such a small town. Muscle Shoals was generating so many number one records that artists started to prefer it to New York or Los Angeles. Muscle Shoals is more than just the mu about the music. It's about the relationships and southern charm of the people who helped shape some of the most influential and groundbreaking music of its time. Muscle Shoals is worth the price of admission. What do you think? I think you're definitely right that Rick Hall is a genius as a producer who we need to respect and admire, I think, more than we currently do. My problem with Muscle Shoals as, a, as cinema is that about two-thirds of the way through the movie, after the Swampers, the rhythm section that you mentioned, leaves right. Rick Hall and abandons them to work at a rival studio. Spoiler alert. I'm Spoiler sorry. alert, it's a true story, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, we, we get this story after they leave to that rival studio that, you, um, that they helped foster the early work of Leonard Skinner. And then they start kind of waxing a bit poetical about Skinner while Rick Hall is struggling to make ends meet at Fame Recording Studios. And then start showing clips of Leonard Skinner, declaring him as, as in terms of some of the, the interviewee's opinions at least, mm -hmm. one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, which is sketchy, That's but whatever. That's very debatable. That's yeah. real debatable. Which we're not going to debate that here. But then what they do is they show a couple clips of Skinner, both he, in this, like two thirds of the way through the movie, and then at the end, performing with a big Confederate flag behind them. And while I understand that that's what Skinner did, and that yeah. Yeah, that is inseparable from Skinner's image as a southern rock band, when you have spent so much time as a movie already proclaiming the, the, the admirable colorblind nature of Rick Hall Studios, and how it was such a big step forward in the music industry in the 1960s, and then go around and show us and try and glorify this band that performed the Confederate flag behind them, even if that's intentional or not, uh, that, I, I can't stick it. That, that's something that just did not gel with me at all. Yeah, I just saw it as an honest, documentary and the Leonard Skinner part was the small part of this greater story mm. to it me. Just, it, was too it, it was too noticeable for me to let it go. That's Do you have a favorite documentary? Comment below and follow us on Twitter at POA Reviews and you might be featured on the next episode of Price of Admission. <laughs>